Hey, it's Scott Brown with Connie and Dick's Service Center in Claremont, California. And I am currently engaged with helping other technicians or those interested in advanced driver assistance in understanding exactly what's going on. Um, I am a visual learner and I think a lot of folks are, are visual learners as well. And a couple of things that I've been frustrated with is understanding exactly what these cameras are looking at and how they're processing the data, uh, how they're using that data. Uh, I do understand that you know they are using uh, convolutional neural networks or deep neural networks to understand the world around the vehicle and how to make the vehicle operate properly. So I've got a couple of demonstrations here to not only show you what the camera uh, object detection and classification is all about, but I also have a demo showing how radar works. And uh, I'm going to walk through a couple of things that I found interesting. And hopefully this video uh, will allow you to understand a little bit more about what is going on. And um, again, I'm learning as we go. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, so let's get started here. So if you look at the screen here, you'll see that I've got an area where you can see we're looking at the, the camera and I've got, a, I've got an NVIDIA uh, little computer system running here uh, with a camera and it's running a, a program right now uh, where it's detecting objects and it's classifying them. And uh, you see I've got Bozo the Clown here uh, in the uh, in the target, but uh, or in the area, but it's not picking him up, as you can see. As I walk into the scene, you can see where it's it's identifying me as a person, but it's also giving a confidence level at the top of the screen there. So you see, I'm around 97% or so. You can see it's identifying cars. Uh, you know, as I walk over here, I'm going to get to the side of the camera. And now you can see that uh, it's identifying Bozo there uh, with about a 67% probability. But what's really cool here is if I start putting my hand in here, it starts identifying that this is a human or a person. And it's got a pretty good high com uh, confidence level. The more of my hand it can see, uh, pretty doggone cool. Um, so if you look at the very uh, left, or to my left, uh, so it would be the camera, camera vision left. You see a red truck uh, sitting there. Now it hasn't identified it yet, but I'm going to start rolling, rotating this over and see, you see it says car and it's about 50%. And as we add more to the picture, it says truck. And it starts growing in confidence. And now we're at about 98%. It says, yeah, that's a truck. I identify that as a truck. And then as I expand more, there's another car it just picked up and so on. And if we want to keep rolling, you'll see my big screen that I've got. Uh, this is inside of our classroom here. And as we roll around, it says, oh, that's a TV. It's identified that as a TV. So, so pretty doggone cool. Um, it, uh, the way these systems work is that they are referencing a, a trained uh, set of objects that uh, it, it understands how to look at the edges and pieces those together and says, oh yeah, that's a, that's a car, that's a truck, uh, that's a bike. And so I do have a, I have a bike right over here. And you'll see how it, uh, as I roll that in there, you see it says bicycle. And uh, it works, works pretty good. I'm going to stand that up right there. Um, let's just go for a demo here. Go for a demo ride. And you'll see it, how it works in uh, real time here. So I'm going to park, park my bike here. Um, you'll see it, it is seeing Bozo there, and it's identifying him as a, as a person. And you see as I, you know, block the, uh, or unblock the bike. Uh, another interesting thing I found is that, you know, as you, if I roll straight up, 
Well, it sees it's, it's identifying it as a bike. Now it, it doesn't see it as a bike, but if I turn the wheel, give it a little bit more of an edge, see it's, that's how it starts to identify, oh, that, that must be a bike. So pretty cool. So you see, I, I did have this chair here. It didn't really identify that as a chair. I do have a chair here and we'll see if it, yeah, there we go. It's identifying it as a, as a chair. So that I think is pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, the next thing that I've got here to demo is radar. And what we've got here, I've got a, I've got a computer right here and we're running a millimeter wave uh, demonstration board uh, here. So I've got two transmitters and four receivers on this. And this demo visualizer here from Texas Instruments allows me to do some tuning and, and whatnot. And for those of you that are familiar with calibration, you can see that I've got a couple of, couple of devices aiming devices for radar. These are trihedrals. Uh, these are reflectors to basically reflect back a, a strong signal so that you can set up and properly calibrate a radar sensor. And typically when you're calibrating a radar sensor, you're, you're, finding, you're defining the center line of that vehicle and the service information is giving you a specific distance and height to put the trihedral in and then it reflects back. These are, uh, these are basically constructed of an isosceles triangle. So you've got two edges that are the same length and the other edge is a different length. Uh, this here is the aftermarket Autel unit. Uh, it typically, it has a larger uh, surface area than, uh, than the others. This one that I have here is a Toyota uh, factory reflector. And if we look at our display here, you'll see, and you can actually see me moving around here and it's picking me up and I'm going to stand off to the side and you'll see that this one right here, this one in the center, um, at that second, uh, line, is uh, it's right on the dead center line squared up with the actual uh, uh, radar sensor device. And it's 4.8 meters away from uh, the face of this unit, okay? And then our other unit, our Toyota unit, is over here in this quadrant. And it is uh, one, it's negative 1 1.2 meters off to the left here and it's 2.08 meters away from the center of the, uh, from, from the face of the radar. And so what I wanted to show you here is that, you know, this is giving us our, our distance along the axes, but over on the right here, you'll see the relative power, the strength of the, the radar signal that comes back. And if you look here, I'm gonna move my mouse over, and when you see the two right there, that's 108.2 uh, dB. And if I look to, this is the Autel unit, that's 108.6 dB. So they're essentially the same strength coming back, but because the Autel unit is a larger unit, it's got a, it's got a larger return back, so its signal is actually equal to that of the Toyota unit that's uh, closer. So uh, if we look at this uh, chart here, and you can also see that this is giving you, this axis here is the distance away. So you see this one that's bouncing around right here? That's actually me, and I'm gonna move away from that, and you can see that that disappears, uh, that little dot there. If I roll back over, you can see it's starting to pick me up. All right, so the other cool thing here is that we'll look at the closing uh, speed or the Doppler. This is as things are changing, right? So we've got 
Um, along the x-axis, we have range in meters. So here I'm closer to the sensor, here I'm further away. And then this one in Doppler in meters per second, uh, it's showing a negative number and a positive number. And so this will basically tell, it tells the unit how close this, this uh, component is or the, the item it's tracking and what its rate of change is, okay? So you'll see the little dot there that uh, uh, is kind of moving around here. That's gonna be me, okay? So our other two items here are not moving, the, uh, the other objects that it's picking up. And you can see in this area here, I'm gonna go over and look at our stats here, and you'll see how many devices it's actually, it's got eight detected objects in our, uh, in our environment here right now. And there's a lot of tuning and other things that you can do here to control uh, how noisy the environment is. But uh, we're gonna leave all that alone for right now. And I wanted to demonstrate this, uh, this area. You'll see how I, when I get closer, how quickly I'm getting closer and so on. So you can see I'm growing in distance. And then I'm gonna go move in closer and it sees, and then I stopped. So I think that's, uh, that's actually pretty cool visual to see what, uh, what's actually changing. You see how, how quick. So this is, these are some of the inputs or the data uh, parameters that these driver assistance systems are taking in and then they're having to, they, they need to make uh, rationalized decisions about what to do with the automobile. Uh, there are numerous other inputs that come in. Uh, you've got accelerometers that uh, maybe come from the ABS system or the, the accelerometers on the vehicle that, that communicate with the ABS and ABS may be communicating with an ADAS module. You've got wheel speed sensor inputs. Um, you've got uh, numerous other inputs, you know, and these are all doing sensor convergence uh, or sensor fusion to pull all of that stuff together so that these neural networks that are operating inside of these ADAS units can make decisions similar to the way a human makes rational decisions, and they've got to do it very, very quickly. Um, I, I know that we've got level two cars out there. We've got maybe some that are level three or close to level three. Uh, in my opinion, I think we've got a little bit of, we're, we're gonna see, a, it's gonna be a long wait before we actually see the, the level four and five with completely uh, autonomous vehicles because uh, th this is a huge task to ask a machine to make decisions and operate a vehicle and be able to make those decisions right every time. I'm not saying that humans make the same right decision every time because clearly they don't, but uh, it's just, uh, I find it fascinating as to what is going on with these automobiles and how they're putting together all of these sensors and, and how they're trying to put all these things together to make it make it think, understand, and rationalize as a human being. So uh, again, as I mentioned before, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I hope that you found this interesting. If you've got any uh, input on other things you'd like to see, uh, please uh, let me know. And thanks for watching.